In the past few years, I've been working on a charger for people who park on the street and need to charge their EV there. And as part of that, I've had to prototype all sorts of stuff from chargers to sockets to cord sets. And some of this stuff I get other people to make for me and then I put it together. But I also like to do stuff on my own and there's two main reasons for that. The first is just speed. Sometimes it's quicker to get it done myself than waiting a couple weeks for somebody else to do it. The second reason is cost because I'm working on a pretty shoestring budget at this point and cost really matters. Well, one of the parts I've had to build is a little sheet metal bracket that forms an electrical contact. And to do that, you need to bend the sheet metal. So years back, I created a bending brake for sheet metal like this, and it was actually a video on my channel. You can go back and find it. It was a pretty popular channel. It kind of got me to where I am today. And this sheet metal brake is great. I've used it, it still works, but it's pretty thick. It's pretty chunky and it's too big for what I need. So I decided, well, I, I couldn't find a sheet metal brake. I wanted to buy one, but nothing really existed that fit the bill for what I needed. So finally I broke down, I was like, okay, I guess I just gotta build a mini version of this guy. So that's this video. I'm gonna walk through the process of building this little sheet metal brake. And then at the end, I will show you what the part is and what it goes into. This is a pretty simple build. You just need a three quarter inch, half inch angle iron and some two inch hinges. The first thing you do is lay out the hinges on one of the pieces of three quarter inch angle iron and you mark their position. This is because you need to cut this little relief cut in the end of each end of that angle iron so that the hinge barrel can sit into the angle iron. And this is really important because for any bending break of this design, you need to have the pivot point as close to the edge of that piece of angle as possible. And this will allow you to get a really nice crisp bend as you bend the sheet metal. Cutting this out was a bit interesting. I find a hacksaw actually works a lot better in a lot of these circumstances. It's a little more accurate. I don't know, I just like using a hacksaw. You clean it up and you can see the hinge fits in there nicely. After that's done, you can cut that piece of angle iron to length and that will set the length of the entire bending break. You cut another piece of angle to the same length and this will form what I call the base surface of the bending break. So this is basically the surface that you clamp your piece of sheet metal down onto. So I did go and create a little slot in the base section of the, the break and this is really so that the hinge can slot into this, this bit of the break and mount up properly. Uh, I did end up not needing this and eventually you'll see I kind of chop out this whole section of the angle. Uh, but you see that the hinge fits in there nicely and I could proceed to the next step, which was clamping on the bending angle. So you have the bending angle, which mates up to this surface angle. Now it's super important to get the alignment at this point correct before you drill any holes to attach the hinges. If that alignment is off, when you get to the bending operation, it's going to be off there. So I tapped all the holes into the angles and this was really nice because it allowed me to just run screws or bolts straight through the hinges into these tapped holes. That way I don't need to have nuts and sometimes clearance can be an issue on these bits and so this helps out in that regard. I tightened up all the bolts on the hinges for connecting to the front portion, the bending portion of the brake, and then I mounted everything to this back surface and it did the same operation, drilling holes, tapping them, and then finally securing those with the screws. Now you'll see when I got everything connected up on the hinges, I did have some interference issues with the heads of the bolts hitting that back surface or the base surface of the bending brake. So these little brass plates are what we are bending into a wire contact in a socket. And you can see that it starts off in a flat one millimeter thick form and it gets bent into this little C shape here. And the little wire connection uh, bracket goes over it there and the wire goes in and then this will tighten it down against the brass. And so that is the pieces that we're working on making. And the bending break is really to bend this little guy. I had some interference issues with the heads of the bolts. And so what I ended up doing was chopping out the portion of that angle that lied above the hinges. So basically I got rid of that entire hole or slot that I had cut there for the hinges in that bit. 
it would have been easier just to start here, but yeah, well. At this point, it was important to clean up all the bolt heads that were protruding through the surfaces, so I chopped those off with the angle grinder. That made really quick work of that operation. And then I cut out a short section of half inch angle iron to form the hold down clamp. Now the hold down clamp holds the metal that's being bent down against the base surface of the brake and also forms the edge that the bending surface bends against. And so it's super important. Once again, alignment's super important as you drill the holes and tap those for the screws. Getting all those screws positioned super, super accurately is really important for making sure you have an accurate square bend. And so take your time there. I took my time and it paid off. It, it ended up working. The last thing to make is a little handle just to give some leverage on the bending surface of the brake. And I made this from the half inch angle. I did have to cut a 45 degree bevel on the end and this is just so it slots up in against the inner angle of that uh, bending angle. Otherwise, you know, you have that radius on the inside of that piece of angle iron and it just won't slot up in there well. I just used one screw to secure this to the bending angle. That's not great because it can pivot a little bit, but if I made it really tight, it worked well. Of course, I painted the thing. I painted it blue, just kind of in the style of my old brake, and then I secured it to my bench to make everything easier to use. And as you can see, the hold down clamp simply clamps onto that base surface. You can slip in the piece of metal to be bent. And from there, you tighten up that hold down clamp and bend away. Now the bending wasn't always as tight as I would have liked and this has to do with the hinge being not quite at the pivot point uh, between the two angle irons. This could be rectified by a slightly different hinge position but I would need different hinges for that. I found I could fix it by just over bending slightly and then bending back to a 90 degree angle and it came out nice. And this is what the bracket is going into. This is the back side of a socket that is taking power from my charger to the vehicle and you basically plug your cord set into this and that this allows you to transfer power to the vehicle. Uh, there's a few things going on here. You see there's a circuit board on here. The circuit board has some safety features for over temperature and, and things like that. It's also transferring some of the signaling to the vehicle and just overall making the experience a lot better, indicator lights, etc. cetera. Uh, but what we really have here that is of interest is these little wire connection hoops. And the brass piece is actually forming the electrical connection between the wire crimp hoop here and the pins that run to the vehicle. And so it's a really critical piece. There's three of these little brass hoops. There's two over here for the phases or the power. And there is one over here for the ground. And really I bent all these on the bending brake. You can see that they loop up around there and make a really good connection. The design is based on some designs for really heavy duty industrial outlets. And that was the reason I went with this style of uh, brass connection there. So I'll leave it at that for today. I will have more details on what I'm doing here in the next video.